Coming up on show 635, the Model 3 is efficiency king. BMW's plug-ins increase and an electric boat. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Friday, 8th of November. My name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story I can find to save you time. Now, a great time saver if you're in the US is a website built from the ground up. And, well, this time, a couple of years ago, it was nothing but a, a twinkle of an idea in someone's eye. Now, it's a great website and a great resource for buyers and sellers and those learning about EVs. Check out myev.com. So, this is big news, and I'll tell you why. The 2020 Tesla Model 3 is the most efficient EV ever tested by the EPA. Well, the Model 3 now beats the previous leader, which was the Hyundai Ioniq. I mentioned that on yesterday's podcast and the upcoming 2020 model year version of that. It has slightly higher energy consumption, says InsideEVs.com. So therefore, the Tesla now becomes the most efficient. We are talking specifically Standard Range Plus. So they got some new... Uh, some new thinking on this, some new EPA ratings. The standard range plus 250 miles or 402 kilometers of range, but the efficiency of that for next year is 239 watt hours per mile. 239 watt hours per mile or 149 watt hours per kilometer. That includes charging losses. And that's the best result ever in an EPA stat. It's 3.6% better than last year's Ionique. It's 5.5% better than the new Ionique. The standard range plus Model 3 is also state-of-the-art in the case of highway efficiency. So if you're on the highways, it's 255 watt-hours a mile uh, compared to 158 watt-hours per kilometer. And even in the city, that efficiency is only just behind last year's or the current model Hyundai Ionique. And staying with this story, and inside EVs, this week, all Tesla Model 3 versions, those available currently, and weirdly those that aren't available, have now got new EPA efficiency ratings for a range and efficiency. Well, surprisingly, the EPA website lists a mid-range version for 2020, despite it not being available to actually buy. Does this mean they're bringing it back I don't think so. Does it mean that they have an EPA rating for it so that Tesla can pull a lever if they wanted to? And I don't think they will. But if at some point they wanted to put the mid-range version back into the lineup, they certainly could because they've got a current EPA rating for it to literally go live immediately. The number's the same as previously on the mid-range version, which stays listed. Again, the other thing is, is maybe the EPA just didn't take it off. So, I don't know, lots of lots of possibles here. Uh, surprisingly, the EPA website now also lists a 2020 version of the long-range rear-wheel drive version. Again, a car Tesla don't actually sell. Used to, but not on the market at the moment. The efficiency is the same as previously. The range, though, is up by 20 miles, 330 miles. Wow, that's so cool. 330 miles for the long-range rear-wheel drive. That would be my weapon of choice. I don't need all-wheel drive. I don't need performance. But if if you're going to go all-wheel drive, you're buying a Model 3, and you're going to go long-range all-wheel drive. Well, look, it's such a small amount. It's not a small amount, but it's relatively less to then make the jump to performance. You may as well. But I wouldn't do that. Because I don't need performance, I don't need penalty points on my license, or I <laughs> to get in trouble with the police. I probably would do. Uh, I, for me, long range, rear wheel drive, always get the range if you possibly can. Nothing beats range. Performance, great. Nothing beats a nice big, long, big battery, big range. But I can't get that one because it's not for sale. But it is listed as a 2020 model on the EPA website. Shame that's discontinued. Uh, so what about the ones they do sell? Well, all-wheel drive long range is 322 miles, so only 8 miles less, uh, which is 518 kilometers. And actually, with the performance model, they've given it three EPA ratings for different wheels, 18, 19, or 20s. I think most people, most, not all, most will get 20-inch wheels, 
on the Performance Model 3, which is now rated at 299 miles. Still nothing to kick it out of bed in the morning for doing you know what. Right, let's talk BMW. Sales of BMW Group electrified vehicles were up almost 10% in October due to the availability of some new plugins. The BMW 330e, the BMW X5 has got a plug socket now. Uh, that's the BMW. <laughs> they love their names. Uh, BMW X5 X Drive 45e. Yes, that one. Uh, the BMW i brand for the i3 and the i8 continued very positive sales over the course of the year, up 20% to 35,000 units almost, according to Automotive World. Sales of the Mini Cooper SE Countryman plug-in hybrid has gone up a third, and the launch of the BMW X3 as a plug-in hybrid is coming soon. It might, it might be out, right? It's last week's podcast. Maybe I mentioned that one. Uh, and the Pure Electric Mini BMW Group expanding their range of electrified vehicles by 12 models by the end of the year. Uh, sorry, up to 12 models by the end of the year. And they're going to have 1 million electric, uh, well, electrified vehicles, but 1 million uh, by the end of 2021. BMW expects to have delivered a total of half a million fully electric and plug-in EVs by the end of this year, including the Mini brand as well, by the way. All right, let's move on and talk bi-directional charging. Yes, something that the, the Chadamo socket on Nissan's has been doing for a very long time, but this story coming from the press office at BMW Group, thank you to them for that, uh, the newly launched bi-directional charging management project, the BCM project, brings together companies and institutions from the automotive, energy and scientific sectors, they say. Uh, the press release says the research project will run for three years under the German Aerospace Centre, funding by the Federal Ministry, testing for the first 50 BMWs. They're going to use i3s, actually, and they're going to equip them with bi-directional charging technology. And it's expected to start real-world condition testing by 2021. We'll create a platform, they say. This is a real press release speak. Uh, this will create a platform for subsequently implementing the technology across the board and so integrate electric mobility into Germany's power grid. Yeah. In other words, BMW are thinking about doing what Nissan's been doing for a very long time in Japan. There's even a line in this press release uh, which I didn't include in this story because I refused to to, to paste it in. But I but now now I'm mini ranting with you. It, the, the, I'm paraphrasing, but the, the 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 sentence in the press release is something like, "This is the very first time it's been done." Well, maybe it's the first time you've converted some BMW i3s to be bi-directional, but it's not the first time the vehicle to I don't know X vehicle to grid vehicle to home has been done. It's been done for a very long time. Just most people don't know about it. Let's move on before I get in trouble. And the first 100% electric passenger boat fitted with Second Life batteries has hit the... Normally I say hit the road. It's, it's hit the Seine, as in the River Seine. Paris. We go to France now. And the Black Swan is an EV boat designed for private or business cruises on the Seine. And it's a partnership with Group Renault, and they're demonstrating the effectiveness of what they call the circular economy. This is another press release sent to me by uh, media.group.renault.com, the press site of Renault. So forgive me with the corporate speak. The Black Swan, a zero emissions boat with a capacity of two to eight people for family excursions of around two hours has been designed in the spirit of the circular economy. Powered by two electric motors, no generator, no backup, no combustion motor, uh, no exhaust gases, uh, lithium-ion batteries taken from old Renault electric vehicles when they've reached the end of their first car life, will be reconditioned and repurposed and installed beneath the boat's side benches in four battery stainless steel housings that have been designed to ensure watertight operations, therefore energy and raw materials required to produce new batteries has been avoided they say the big problem with all of this and you know that i'm i know i'm an eternal optimist and i love this podcast to be optimistic forward thinking positive and this is a positive interjection i'm making here the problem even though it sounds like a problem the problem 
with all of this Second Life battery talk. All of these batteries are still doing their first life. So all these projects are coming up like, hey, we've made a boat with old Renault EV batteries. You name me how many of those batteries they've got sitting around going, what are we going to do with them all? I, I bet they had to scrabble for those four batteries in this concept. The thing is, EVs, even the really early ones, going back to the early Leafs, the original Zoes, they're still going. And in many cases, they're still going strong. I'm not, obviously, I'm, I'm keen on Second Life batteries. I'm keen on deflecting the criticism that there's going to be some recycling nightmare when all of these EVs that are going to be hitting the roads reach the end of their life. But look, even if I couldn't do anything else with the battery, I'd put it in my garage as home storage. It's certainly, it's never, no single battery is gonna go to landfill, ever. Too, in, too important to have access to, even if you pull it apart and recycle it, but swelled well onto them for building a boat out of second life batteries. Let's talk about wind. This week, GE began testing their first 12 megawatt wind turbine and they signed a deal to supply turbines to a 715 megawatt wind farm in china's henan province says clean technica well ge renewable energy and china uh, Huan Eng group signed an agreement this week uh, for a 715 megawatt wind farm at uh, Piyang in the Henan province in China. Uh, they're going to make 286 of these turbines with 130-metre uh, towers. Uh, turbines all about the unique uh, low wind speed, which is encountered in that particular geography. And they're going to be made in China by GE. When completed, this is going to be done by next summer. It's going to power 500,000 homes purely on wind power in China. Awesome, brilliant, love it. Right, question of the week this week is all about carrots and sticks. What do you prefer, the carrot, the incentive, or the stick? The penalty for the polluters. Email me anytime, hello at evnewsdaily.com. There are 254 patrons of the podcast. Thank you for keeping me going and gradually catching up uh, with recording these shows, even though I sit down and I write them with all the news each day uh, and then don't always get a chance to record and edit and Mixed with the music and master takes quite a long time to make this every day. And like I say, I've been somewhat distracted with a, uh, a couple of big things happening in uh, in life at the moment. If I can tell you, when, when I, I will have to ask permission, but when I can tell you more, um, absolutely you'll be the first person that I tell. Not the very first, actually. Uh, but, but, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, thank you my patrons, my premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, uh, Brad Crosby, and Avid Technology. So, if you would like to get any previous show, well, they're all in the archive. If you want to get 634 of those are in there. Uh, tons of brilliant EV stories we report on every single day. In the meantime, the new shows come at you first and free and automatically if you are a subscriber. And it's a free subscription. And given that it's totally free, if you're not 100% satisfied, I will give you a full refund. Uh, if you want to say hi on social media, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. Remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.